Howdy, my name is Blaine Carter and this is a quick video to explain what happens when you publish an extension from Oracle's Visual Builder. When you click the publish button in Oracle's Visual Builder, it will do a bunch of stuff for you. The first thing it'll do is it'll make sure that the back end where you're going to deploy your extension is ready to go. Uh, then it'll do some Git stuff for you, and I know that's kind of vague, but you don't have to really know a lot of Git to understand what's going on. Uh, once that's done, it will package up your extension and then it will deploy it. So let's jump over to Visual Builder and actually take a look. For this demonstration, I have a small uh, application extension that's been created here. Uh, you can see some information up here on this spot where it's showing the Git repository is Blaine Demo and the Git branch that I'm on is A3. So I will make a real quick little change. I'll just move the edit column to the end. You can see that moved it here and this little dot popped up. What the dot means is that I've made some changes and those changes need to be published. When you click the publish button, you'll get a window that pops up with a couple different options in it. Uh, the option I recommend would be merge after review. What this does is it will create a merge request over in Visual Builder Studio where you can have a second set of eyes take a look at your changes. In this case, it would be John Dunbar. If you are using the issue tracking system over in Visual Builder Studio, you'd also be able to link those issues to the request right here. I'm not, so there's no options there. Uh, what this does is this allows John to go through and take a look at my changes, make sure that uh, it does what I say it does and that it resolves any of the issues that I've linked. Once my change has been reviewed and accepted, it would be merged into the main branch of the Git repository over in Visual Builder Studio. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to skip the review process and use the merge now process. So for merge now, you need a detailed commit message. So I'm going to put uh, move the edit column and then I'm going to hit publish changes. And this will do a bit of stuff for you in the background. Pretty much it does everything else at this point. Uh, what these messages mean is at the, the first thing it will do is it will check the environment and the build jobs, make sure everything on the back end is ready to be packaged and deployed. It will commit your changes to your local uh, A3 branch here. Uh, notice that it changed to you to a different branch. I'll cover that in a second. Uh, it will do a git fetch. So it will pull down any changes from the remote repository that's over in Visual Builder Studio. It will take the main branch and merge that branch into the branch that you just changed. What that does is that makes sure that if somebody else were working on the same extension as you are, that you're, you don't have any merge content. Conflicts. Uh, everything's fine here, so that just merges it into the A3 branch. Uh, that's the best way to handle the merge conflict, so they all happen there rather than in the, in the uh, main branch. So once that's good to go, it will merge your A3 branch, which now has all of the changes from everybody, back down into the main branch, which effectively pushes your changes into the main branch. Now all of this is still happening local in your uh, Visual Builder work workspace. And so the last thing that it does here is it does a git push and pushes that modified main branch back up to uh, the Visual Builder Studio uh, repository, which triggers the rest of the process. Uh, the whole thing with the John Dunbar uh, timestamp branch is this is a uh, think of it as a way to keep a timestamp of every time you've published. Uh, I don't recommend that you continue working in this branch. So what you would do is you'd hit close and then here you could switch to a different branch, give it a different name, uh, just switch to a different branch to continue working and it'll make it easier later on if you need to come back to this branch. But that's pretty much everything you would see on the Visual Builder side of things. So now we're going to switch over to Visual Builder Studio and see what happens when the changes are pushed up to the main repository. 
to get up to Visual Builder Studio, there's this little arrow over here in the corner. Uh, we can click on that and that will take us back over to Visual Builder Studio, uh, which has a whole bunch of tools in here for you to manage your software development lifecycle. Uh, first stop, we'll take a look at the Git repository. Uh, you can see this is the Blaine Demo Git repository and here is the main branch. So any changes, applied to the main branch in the uh, git repo here will trigger a build pipeline. So if you click on builds, this will take you over to the build section, obviously, and we can take a look at the pipeline. So this pipeline was created automatically for me when I first created the workspace to create the extension. And in here, there are two very simple steps. It's going to take the application extension and package it up, get it ready to deploy, and then it will deploy that uh, package. Let's take a look at uh, some of the details for these jobs. Uh, a couple different ways you can get to the details are you can click on the names directly in the pipeline or you can go to the jobs tab and click on the name over there and that will get us into the details screen. Uh, the details screen has all kinds of information in here such as the, the build history the last few times it's run. You can see the trends on whether it was successful or failed and how long it it took, uh, but what we're interested in is the configuration of the job. So to get to the job configuration, you click the configure button. I mentioned earlier that whenever a change is committed to the main branch in the Git repository that it triggers the pipeline. Under the Git tab here is how that's configured. So you can see in the settings here that we're watching the Blaine demo Git repository and we've included the main branch. This checkbox is what tells the, uh, the build pipeline to start if any change is committed to this branch. So once a change happens, a build executor will be spun up. Think of a build executor as a virtual machine that does all your build stuff for you. Uh, so the first thing that happens is it will go and grab a copy of your Git repository and store it locally on that uh, build executor. And then it will be, that code can be used for the remainder of the steps. Over under the steps tab, you can see that the only step that is in this build job is the application extension packaging step. Uh, what this does is it goes into that Git repository that was copied into the executor, grabs all of the bits and pieces that it needs, does whatever kind of processing needs to be done, and creates a new file called extension.vx, which then exists on that build executor. Now, after the job is run, that uh, build executor, it could be spun down, it could be destroyed, it could be reset. Lots of different things could happen to it because we're no longer using it for this particular run of the job. However, we need to get this file to the next step in the, in the pipeline or potentially other steps in the pipeline. So the way you do that is in the after build tab, you can use the artifact archiver, that's hard to say, artifact archiver action, and tell it which files you want to archive. So in this case, we're just archiving the extension.vx file, and what that'll do is that'll take a copy from the executor and attach it to this particular run of this particular job. So how you can see that is if we go back out to the build details, this artifacts button up here will show you the last run of the job and the extension that was created there. So you can see here latest artifact number five. If we needed the artifact from number three, you can click into number three and see the artifact from number three. But what this does is it keeps that artifact with the run of the build job so you can get to it from other build jobs or manually if you need to. Now that we've got all of our changes packaged into a file and we've got that file archived onto the job, we want to switch back over to the jobs tab and look at the deploy job. If we look under the configuration for the job, you'll notice that there are no Git settings configured for this job. 
uh, a recommended practice for when you're building uh, pipelines is that you want to only pull from your Git repository at the very beginning of the process and then you want to work with your artifacts after that. What this does is it helps you avoid those situations where maybe somebody commits changes to the Git repository after you've already started your pipeline you might be working with two different sets of source code. So the best thing to do is to pull once, make all of your artifacts, and then work with those artifacts. So the way we get a copy of that artifact is we switch over to the Before Build tab. In here you can see that we're going to copy an artifact from the package job and here we're going to say just whatever the last successful build was get a copy of that artifact. Once this artifact has been copied down onto the build executor uh, we can use the Oracle deployment step to deploy it to our target instance. So you can see here where we've chosen the target instance, our credentials, and the name of the file. And so that's really all that it takes to get that artifact and deploy it. Now that it's been deployed, let's jump over to the environment and see how to get the URL to get to the extension. So over here, we'll switch to environments. And then under environments, you can see here's my environment here. Here's the instance. If I look at deployments, you can see a list of the deployments that have been made. And I will find the Blaine demo extension. And usually it'll have a checkbox right here. If I open that up, you can see solution accounts. You hit this link and there is my brand new shiny uh, extension uh, deployed and ready to go. And then you can just simply share this URL with, uh, with your team to use your extension. Well, I hope you found that useful. And if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, uh, join us over on the community site. You can see linked there. And uh, thank you for spending your time with me.